What is going on today? We're going to be talking about real estate attorneys. Should you have them? Should you not have them? Due diligence. Where should they be from? Should they be personal injury attorneys? Should they be real estate attorneys, commercial attorneys, will attorneys, estate attorneys? What kind of attorneys should you have? So let's get into all of this. This is 101 when attorneys, with attorneys. So obviously in New York State, you have to have an attorney. In New York City, it's required. So if you're a buyer, you have to have an attorney. If you're a seller, you have to have an attorney. I do go back to one transaction where someone was about to buy an apartment. She signed the contract. She was literally, she signed the contract. She was putting in the board application. She was about to close. And my someone comes to my mom and they have a question to ask me, but I didn't have their direct contact information. My mom says, oh, by the way, this person's about to buy the apartment. I said, oh, that's an attorney thing. She says, I don't think she has an attorney. I said, what do you mean she doesn't have an attorney? She goes, she doesn't have an attorney. So she had to go back. Literally, she signed a contract without an attorney, without, she was about to buy an apartment. And it wasn't about like, oh, screw the attorneys. It was just like, I didn't know you needed one. <laughs> so I'm just gonna sign the contract. I'm gonna go, just go through the board application. I'm just gonna start signing uh, the documents to potentially close. So we had to get her an attorney, obviously reviewed the contract, went into closing, she ended up buying the apartment. But that's the thing is, you could go through the entire process. There wasn't any agents involved. That was the thing is that it was a friend to friend. So they said, oh yeah, no, we'll just draw up this contract and you sign it and then we just transfer the deed. So this is the thing, why are they important? Well, actually, let's get into the type of attorney. Number one is they have to be, if depends where they are. Obviously, we're in New York City. They have to be a real estate attorney based in Manhattan. Brooklyn, in Queens, Manhattan are totally different. Okay, Brooklyn and Queens, sort of, sort of the same. It depends on where you are, but I'm talking about Manhattan. Manhattan has condos and co-ops. They don't have, they don't have houses. They don't have townhouses. They don't do inspections here in Manhattan. So it's totally different. As well as the the contract itself, you want to make sure that your client is actually not only prepared for what might happen, but it's also the contract states here's the diligence that I need to do as a buyer, and which we're going to be talking about in a second. But here are the things that I'm I'm asking the other side. I'm also saying, was there ever a leak? If there was a leak, when was it? What was the extent? Is it handled, okay? Within that, they have all these disclosure lines that says bed bugs and lead paint and things like that. Yes, you actually, you obviously have to have that legally, but then there's other line items that you wanna ensure that the owner is saying, I promise this has never happened. So number one is a flat fee attorney. They usually charge, you know, the retainer fee, which is half of it at contracts, or actually when you retain the attorney, and then the rest of it is paid at the closing. So half of it when you retain them, half of them at the closing table. They're typically gonna be a good attorney, and this is the thing is that you cannot skimp on attorneys. Do not skimp on attorneys. When you skimp on attorneys, you skimp on potentially the largest possession that you're ever gonna sell, or the largest possession you're ever gonna buy. You're literally skipping on the legality of it. That's crazy. Anywhere else, skimp on it. You know, don't renovate as much as you can. Or don't don't do something, you know, maybe, maybe brokers, you know, maybe brokers, maybe, maybe for that half a percentage, get a better broker or a, a, a less broker or whatever. You know, I don't recommend that, but you don't want to skimp on the attorney. I've had multiple clients that the problem arose where I had to handle it. I am not a light, I am not a practicing attorney, but I had to handle it and just say, we gotta go somewhere else. We have so New York City, Manhattan based, ideally, real estate attorney, not a wills attorney, not a state attorney. Okay, you guys understand that. Then there's inexpensive attorneys do not recommend them so why the diligence let's go over this really quick so number one is condos and co-ops they're fixed income entities in other words there's income potentially from the owners if it's a if it's a rental unit if it's an investment property you have possible income from professional space downstairs within the building if it's retail or commercial you also have condos and co-ops. Obviously, that's totally different. They have to go into the diligence of not only whatever the condos and co-ops are doing, so financially, they have to go into it. Is there enough in the reserve fund? Do they have the insurance? Do they have the, the, the means of potentially paying for a lawsuit or a building damage like an elevator or a roof or local law 11? Is there a current assessment right now? They have to go through all of that because what they do is they say, this is what potentially could happen. Well, actually they start with, this is what is happening. They don't have enough money in the reserves or if anything happens, they, they have plenty of money. And then what could happen in the future, which is, you know, they're talking about redoing, say the basement or adding in a, a storage unit or a storage area, okay? Funds for 
credit lines as well. So credit lines, obviously you have the reserve fund which could pay for minor things, you know, say they're upgrading the lighting or the fixtures in the hallways. But then major things like capital renovations, redoing hallways, uh, repainting the hallways, redoing the staircase, ensuring that it's structurally sound, going down and, and ensuring in the basement that it's properly laid out where no one's hitting their head on pipes. I was just in a pre-war building where they had to repaint it red, you know, all the pipes so people don't hit their head and ensue the building I just hit my head. Assessment from the owners is always an ouch. It's always a tough thing to market if it's an ongoing assessment, but typically they say, okay, it's gonna end in a year, it's not a big deal. Blenders, then look for the owner occupancy, okay? And this is what the, so obviously the attorney wants to know, okay? Because the attorney has to know, are you gonna be able to get funding if you're not contingent, if you're cash? Okay, so they have to go in and do all their due diligence because once you sign the contract, you're giving down 10%. So you have to make sure that your attorney is properly qualified. Moving on, lenders have their, like I was just saying, their own set of standards. So your attorney has to look into that. Owner occupancies, unsold units, remaining term of the co-op's underlying mortgage, 98% of all co-ops in New York City have an underlying mortgage. I actually have an exclusive that's paying off their mortgage, which means that they're probably gonna bring down the maintenance on their monthly maintenance because they don't have an underlying mortgage. How much? I don't know, it's tough because they have to look at their expenditures for next year, their budget. Litigation against the building. This is massive. So you have two types of litigation. You have, say, workers litigation, where they say, you know, it's unpaid. But the thing is, the worker didn't actually finish what they were supposed to do. So if it's an elevator is down, or they're supposed to do electrical, or facade work, or roof work, or whatever the case is, and the worker is suing the building, and they say, give us our money, and that's the thing is they can easily put a, a lien, a mechanical lien, on the building. But the thing is, if you do that lien, it shows up on all the diligence because it's the questionnaire that they get back from the management company and they say, what's this for? And they say, well, it's a mechanicals lien or it's, it's a contractor that's suing the building. And they say, why is that? There's other ways, you know, there's other litigations, which is someone slipped and fell while they're moving in or a worker that was helping move in or, or something like that, you know, maybe maybe the doorman, something. They want to know because if, you, if they don't see a proper out, for that litigation, they're not gonna have their client buy in. It's non-marketable as well for other owners. So you wanna take care of that immediately. Other things, quality of life. So quality of life comes down to how are you living within the building? In other words, the roof, is it bright? Is it not bright? How is the renovations? Elevator shutdown, bed bugs, noise, leaks, improvements, large repairs. These are things that, here's an example. I have a, a client that bought in. He was on the top floor. There was no building roof. But then a year into him actually living there, they said, well, actually, we're gonna put in a roof. And he said, you're gonna put in a roof? Why are you gonna put in a roof? They said, well, it's gonna to add to the, the, the marketable value of our building. And we could do it. We have the railing, we have the, the structural support. So we're gonna put in a roof, which means there's gonna be an assessment. But most importantly to my client that was living on the top floor, he said, what the heck? He's gonna potentially hear you know, other people that's on top of the roof on weekends, at night. He's also potentially, something could happen with the roof while repairing it, which is a leak that goes into his apartment. So he was against it. And that's the thing is that you're not gonna know, but it's something that the attorney let him know, listen, you're on the roof, this potentially could happen. You could potentially have leaks. You could potentially have uh, the building go in and put in a roof. Confirmation that the apartment is proper. So there's obviously a bunch of you know, correct designation, correct name, is the apartment legally constituted as a single dwelling, correct number of shares, correct, correct name on the, the co-op, the maintenance amount, how much is the tax deductibility. They go in and those are the minor things. Let's go into the specialized uses. Is it used as a pieter? Can you use it as a rental in the future? How, how much is it if you do, does the co-op take a percentage if you're gonna use that as a rental? Is there any flip tax, ownership requirements, buying, uh, parents buying for kids, guarantors, co-purchasing, gifting, there's so many different types. Foreign buyer deposits, if it's a condo, loan restrictions, you know, on the amount. Is there any entity that owns more than 10%, which is unfinanceable, and obviously the alteration requirements if you're actually looking to renovate. So in other words, what's required if you're looking to 
get a new kitchen, get a new bathroom, replace the flooring, or completely gut the place. So in other words, you know, branch lines, windows, do you have to reserve an elevator? How much is it? Do you have to put money in deposit? What's the, the amount of insurance that the, the contractors need? So this is what they actually review. So that is just the, the basics. Um, they review, number one, the financials of the building. Talked about in, in that in the beginning. That is almost as important as anything else because if you see a steady increase in maintenance that are just going, going and going, that's, that's gonna be a non-marketable building in the future. Offering plan, the sale application, in other words, the purchase application, the minutes of the board, so what do they talk about at their board meetings? Is there anything coming online? Is there any assessments that are coming as well? questionnaire and then I just go into ways that we help. So number one is we have to get all the all the items for the attorney to make sure that they do their due diligence, which I just talked about, the purchase application, the financials, the offering plan, things like that. However, this is this if you're an owner or your buyer, it doesn't really matter. Stock certificate if it's a co-op, maintenance invoice. This is all gonna happen and help the attorney to make sure that they're properly protecting you and that there is no problem when you're going into closing. Oh, actually the maintenance is different or maybe that, that invoice is from a while ago or the tax the tax bill is actually last year and the assessment just, just ended. Oh man, I, I've been in a couple of those. Where the, the assessment ends and we weren't, it's like the, the attorney needs to do the, dil the diligence that a 421A tax abatement is gonna be ending in a condo or new construction, or new conversion, J51, you know, things like that. So if it's self-managed, obviously, so self-managed means that the actual shareholders or the actual condo are self-managing themselves. They're paying the insurance, they're paying the city, they're doing their own taxes, they're doing their own financials, or at least hiring that out. And going into it, I'll just say is, if there's, you also wanna know just basic things. You know, how's the synergy with the board in the management company or with you in the management company? Is there is there any, um, I have a, a client right now that the board is, uh, is very challenging. Okay, to say the least, they don't. They only allow one renovation in the building. That's something that you wouldn't know until you you bought in, and then they put that rule into place. And now these buyers have to wait months until they could renovate. So they're living in a place that they're probably six, seven months out from actually renovating their apartment. They didn't know that into, because their buyer didn't. Do, their buyer's attorney didn't do the diligence or ask or you know for the alteration agreement. But that would have came up in the questionnaire. Another thing is following up on the on the progress and the, the proactivity of the board. Because if it takes a while to get some things done or there has to be a vote on everything because it's a massive building, imagine that. You're, you're just like this little inkling. It's like one person among a nation. So get a New York City, preferably Manhattan-based real estate attorney if you're in Manhattan, obviously Long Island, whatever. Someone that specializes it. It's not your, your uncle who does personal injury. It's not your aunt who does wills or estates or something like that, yet you gotta get a New York City, Manhattan-based real estate attorney. If you guys, and obviously good, uh, I'll just add this in, obviously good title company, and then you follow up on the progress as it goes down the line between a good attorney into contract, to the purchase application, through financing, through the board interview, to closing. All right, so if you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below, and as always, reach out. We're, we're always here, we have Tons of attorneys that we work with that are very good. And of course, as always, charles at botanston.com is my email and calls directly or emails.